Very good evening, a good morning, and good afternoon to those friends who join from other parts of the world. We are delighted to see you all on the screen. The former director of ECC, Reverend Dr. Mani Chako, and Perikosa, and other uh, friends. Thank you so much for joining this evening lecture. This evening is the sixth lecture we have on this series, Christian Leadership and Pandemic. And after this, we'll have one more lecture and that would be the final lecture. And this evening we are very happy and fortunate to have Monsignor Father Zainathan, the Vicar General of the Archdiocese of Bangalore, a renowned scholar in the field of communication to take the session on social and digital media in Christian ministry. And the session will be moderated by Reverend Vinod Allen. Before I hand over the time to our moderator, I would like to say a few words about the moderator and then I will hand over the time to him. Reverend Vinod Allen is an olden priest of the Church of South India from Malabar Diocese. He completed Master of Theology in History of Christianity from the United Theological College, Bangalore. And currently he is serving as a faculty in Kerala United Theological Seminary, Trivandrum. He is now pursuing doctorate and he will soon be completing his research. Thank you so much, sir, for sparing your available time this evening to moderate the session. I now hand over the time to Reverend Allen. Over to you, sir. He will uh, welcome and introduce the speaker. Thank you, Malam, for this uh, opportunity to moderate the session. Uh, in fact, uh, I was uh, busy, very busy today. Uh, this morning, my grandson fell sick and uh, he is hospitalized. I'm just coming. when. Uh, Melnum called me, I was driving back uh, to my quarters. And, uh, you know, it so happened and uh, I'm happy uh, by his grace, I'm able to be here uh, with you uh, for this uh, prestigious and uh, most important uh, webinar on the series of pandemic uh, and the Christian work. And uh, this is sixth uh, webinar. And uh, we have a very distinguished uh, guest, uh, Monsignor, uh, very Reverend Monsignor S. J. Nardin. He is the Vigar uh, General of the Archdiocese of Bangalore. Uh, he's also the Vice President of the Archdiocese and Board of Education. And uh, he was a former director of St. Germain's Academy, Bangalore, and also a member of the Governing Council of St. Aloysius College in Bangalore. And personally, he is also pastoring is a parish priest of Our Lady Lourdes Church, Whitefield, Bangalore. And uh, to his uh, credit, uh, there are so many things uh, you, can, you can say. He's a, he's a founder and director of the Art Diocese and Communication Center in Bangalore. And he has been participating in many national and international conferences on mass media and other related subjects. And uh, he's also a consultant for media studies. Uh, as a visiting faculty member, he is uh, giving communication courses in many Christian uh, institutes in and outside Bangalore, including Dharmaram Vidya Kshetra and the United Theological College in Bangalore. Monsignor S. J. Nathan is the Executive Secretary of the Karnataka Regional Catholic Bishops Council, an uh, executive member of all Karnataka United Christian Forum for Human Rights, and also uh, executive member of the Conference of Diocese and priests of India. He is uh, a Senate member of the Dharmaram Vidya Kshetra and a pontifical, uh, and it's also a, a canon, uh, a theology of theology and canon in Bangalore. Just uh, recently, the Bible Society of India and the Catholic Church have initiated a project to jointly publish the re edited interconfessional Kannada Bible in Karnataka. And he is one of the conveners of uh, this. Uh, uh, commendable project. Monsignor Jainadin is uh, not a new to U ECC, uh, already uh, friends of our, uh, uh, the former uh, uh, 
directors uh, like uh, uh, Dr. Mani Zalkochan and uh, the present director, uh, Dr. Shampi uh, Achan, all uh, talked about. And uh, he, will, he has been enabled to uh, our uh, Dr. Shampi Achan uh, in uh, different, different places, I heard. And it's uh, my immense joy to uh, welcome Monsignor Jain Arden to, to present his uh, paper uh, on the SL sixth lecture on the series. Monsignor, you are welcome. Uh, thank you, Reverend Vinod Allen and all the distinguished participants, very especially the director, uh, Reverend uh, uh, Shambhi Thongdesan, uh, director, uh, and also the other former distinguished uh, directors and other important personnel for participating here in India abroad. Reverend Devino said, uh, I'm the neighbor. Yes, Jesus Christ said, love your neighbor. See, this is my neighbor, so I need to love uh, this institute. So uh, I would like to share with you a couple of points. Before that, my dear friends, I just request you a minute of silence for the you know, victims in Ukraine. We are Christian leaders. And what is happening in other parts of the world, if we close our eyes, if we're insensitive, we're not Christians. Just this afternoon, I received a, a message that, uh, you know, many women are, uh, you know, raped there and the people are uh, you know, dying of starvation and uh, innocent people are killed. Therefore, it is uh, just uh, pause a while for the repose of the souls of those uh, departed uh, members there. At the same time, let us also pray for peace uh, between Russia and Ukraine. Let us pray. My dear friends, my topic for this evening is social and digital media in Christian ministry. The thoughts that I'm going to ideas I'm going to share with you, perhaps many of you are aware of it, but in this session, we are trying to recall, trying to you know, recap whatever we have heard and also few challenges we are not aware of it. First of all, very quickly, what is social media? Social media is a collective term for websites and uh, applications that focus on communication, community building, and interaction, content sharing, and collaboration. People use the social media to stay in touch and interact with friends, family, and various communities. Business use social communications to market and promote their products and attract customer concerns. First of all, we need to distinguish be between social media and digital media. Now, people are aware of uh, the impact of the social media, and especially during the past two years, COVID time, the only, you know, just to say, platform that kept all of us together, my dear friends, you know very well, the social media or social networks. And people literally, they were glued, and uh, that kept us all together and united. And uh, as such personal, we know, our ministries, we could not have a, a physical gathering or worship service, but we have heard online um, uh, the programs or worship services, and the people are given the opportunity to participate in such um, you know worship services. And people also they through Facebook and uh, uh, WhatsApp uh, they were in touch with each other and they shared some of the media uh, products uh, with one another. So social media. I'll come back to this later in depth. We'll discuss about it. next. Uh, what are the business applications of social media? Today, people are business-minded, be it social media or digital media. Ultimately, what happens, they would like to you know, sell their product, sell the product in order to win the customers, in order to build a community. community. In business, social media is used to market products, promote brands, connect to customers, and foster business. As communication platform, social media promotes customer feedback and makes it easy for customers to share their experiences with a company. Business can respond quickly to positive and negative feedback, address customer problems, and maintain or rebuild customer confidence. So we need to keep in mind at the outset that whether social media or digital media, ultimately we are trying to sell a product. Product may be just to say your electronic gadgets or your books or some things and even ideas. 
we are try trying to promote uh, certain gospel but, but the values, social and ethical values. We are trying to market it, uh, you know, within codes um, in uh, the broadest, broadest sense of the term. So we are going to promote. Uh, in which case, we need to understand how the secular media function and how they are trying to just uh, say develop or succeed in their business, uh, you know, activities. The, the, for us, social media is also used for crowdsourcing. That is the practice of using social network to you know, disseminate knowledge, goods or services. Companies or organizations use crowdsourcing to get ideas from employees, staff, customers, and the general public for improving products or developing future products or services. What are the benefits of social media? First and foremost, social media provides several benefits including the following. First of all, user visibility. Social platforms uh, let people easily communicate uh, with one another. And they, uh, they also share their ideas uh, or the content. So user visibility is one of the benefits of a social media. And let me put it, is the main benefit of a social media. Second, business and the product marketing. These platforms enable businesses to quickly publicize their products and services to a broad audience. So today we are not just a citizens, we are netizens. And some of you are participating in different parts of India and different parts of the world. Now we belong to one community. And what makes this uh, uh, possible is uh, the social network uh, or uh, our Zoom or whatever we, the uh, platform that we use. So in order to build the community, very important. In some cases, the content created on social media is a product and that product can be shared. Now, I will be sharing this uh, presentation with uh, Anamin Loon and he will forward it back to you. So we can do that in real time. Now we are having it, you know, where earlier, you know, we were we, traveling and we have to travel uh, across the seas uh, and uh, people are also spending money. And today uh, the Zoom makes it possible that without uh, traveling, leaving our place, uh, we are able to you know, sell our ideas or share our ideas with one another. And that is the blessing, that is the benefit. And audience building, social media helps entrepreneurs and artists build an audience for their work. In some cases, social media has eliminated the need for a distributor. So we don't require a distributor at all. Directly, I'm just talking to you, I'm sharing this product and you can share it with your groups. So we don't require a distributor at all. We just to say cross that uh, hurdle because anyone can upload their content uh, and uh, transact uh, business online. For example, an amateur musician can post a song on Facebook, get instant visibility among their uh, network of friends uh, who in turn share it on their networks. So my dear friends, you first of all, use the visibility and business and product marketing, audience building, uh, and in real time, the business transaction take place and we just to say, uh, super, supersede, so to say, the distributors. Next, what are the other benefits of social media? You know, very well, my dear brothers and sisters, my dear friends, we can always, uh, you know, retrieve the social media any point of time. And if you're given the shared, you know, the privileges, we can also rework on those products and make, we can customize it those products for our specific audience group. And secondly, we can also do it through software and through various apps, we can, we can translate it into our local language or we all can also edit it. So that privilege is there in social media. And what are the challenges of social media? That is very important, my dear friends, social, what are the challenges? Social media can also pose challenges to individual users in the following ways, mental health issues, Overuse of social apps can result in burnt out, social media addiction, and other issues. Today, you know, my dear friends, less spoken is better. Today, our children and youth, they are so to say victims that are vulnerable to social media. So much so, the relationship in the family between the partners, parents, and children, relatives, and their interaction is very much affected because of the social media. Now, next is the polarization. 
Individuals can end up in filter bubbles. They create the illusion of open discourse when the user is actually sequestered in an algorithmically generated online community. Polarization, yes. And disinformation. Polarized environments foster the spread of disinformation where the perpetrator's intent is to deceive others with the false information. Yes, people, they create uh, their profile and they post a picture on the, their profile as their DP, but the person may not be the actual person and it is all disinformation or sometimes uh, they give false uh, information and people are uh, gullible. And as a result, what happens, uh, they become victims. Uh, these are one of few challenges uh, that uh, pose for us today, especially our the ministry, ministry, our Christian ministries. Uh, Next is offensive posts. So conversation on uh, intranets, uh, enterprise collaboration tools can veer off into non-work related subjects. The offensive posts, sometimes uh, they target a particular group, a particular religion, a particular uh, ideological or the organization that promotes a particular ideology. So it offensive posts. And uh, here again, the children and youth, they are misguided if they are not made responsible media consumers. And that is our responsibility. As uh, you know, ministers, uh, we need to make our children and youth responsible media consumers. And for that, we need to know how media today function and what are the advantages and disadvantages medium. And it is manipulated by so-called within boards, the business uh, uh, you know, uh, leaders. So we have to think uh, and very professionally mm, and in order to help our uh, children and youth. And security and retention. Traditional data security and retention policies may not work with the features available in collaboration tools. This can raise security risks and compliance issues that companies or organizations must deal with. Yes, we don't know, especially uh, internet. There is no security at all. Unless we have got an internet, anybody can just manipulate. Any can, anybody can tackle our uh, say websites or information. Therefore, we are taking risks. If we are not alert, if we are not well informed, my dear friends, we will definitely become you know victims to the so-called the hackers. We should be conscious, and especially as I told you, children and youth they need our guidance. The future of our churches. The future of our institutions depend on children and youth. And if we are not alert, if we are not integrating, I'm using the word integrating, not use media, social media, integrating media, very important. And some of you in the, in the communication field, you will agree with me. Today, media are not apart from an individual. Today, they are an extension of an individual. My specs, extension of my eyes. Microphone, extension of my mouth and the speakers, extension of my ears, and the typewriter, extension of my hands, computer, extension of my brain, and my heels, my wheels are extension of my heels. Therefore, as Marshall McLuhan says, today, media are the extension of an individual. Therefore, we cannot just to do away with, if we do, we do away with the media and our real identity is questioned and will be annihilated. Please note this point very, very clearly. There is no question of asking whether we can integrate media. Whether or not, how to integrate media is a great challenge for us. Then productivity concerns, social interaction, whether online or in person is distracting and can affect our employees' productivity or the staff productivity. What are enterprise social media best practices? Here are some social media uh, best practices for companies to follow. Establish social media policies that set expectations for appropriate social behavior. So it is not only applicable to big companies, even a church organizations, my dear friends, we need to set expectations for appropriate social behavior. These policies should also ensure social media posts to do, to do not expose the company or organization to legal problems or public em embarrassment. Guidelines should include directives for when an employee must identify them uh, as a uh, most important factor in our interaction with one another. Focus on platforms geared, um, that is very important, like uh, you know, uh, Twitter or LinkedIn. I'll come back to that. There are, my dear friends, uh, there are 22 or 23 or 24 uh, you know, that can uh, uh, substitute your WhatsApp. 
and we are not aware of it. And uh, we need to be aware of it. For that, uh, we need to also understand the enterprise as I told you, social media practices. Put in place an engaging customer-centric strategy. Today, customers are our bosses or our the end users are our bosses. It is not we. That's why in business, it is said, don't give your customers what you have. Give to them what they need. Very important. We have the content. And the content is not given through appropriate uh, the social media, you know, the network or the platforms, uh, the content is affected. Therefore, we cannot separate uh, medium message and the medium, they are, uh, you know, integral part of each other. One cannot exist with the other. We also say very proudly, Jesus is both the message and the medium. And he came into this world and uh, to give the message of eternal salvation, message of salvation, and he himself is the medium. And we, the followers or the ministers who are given this responsibility as educators, as formators, as parents, we need to understand the incumbent responsibility that we have in integrating media into our ministries at the same time helping the end users or our members of our churches and organizations to become responsible media consumers. Use social media analytics tools to measure user engagement. Use a conversational voice in post that comes across as professional but not rigid. This is a very important. My reference, it is very easy, easy to use uh, you know, technological jargons, uh, iPhone terminologies, but to come down to the level of the people, to make uh, you know, whatever uh, the message that communicate uh, through our uh, social media networks in an ordinary simple way is a great challenge. So short and long form content to make it social friendly. Today, you take any technology is user friendly. Likewise, even the content also should be very simple, ordinary simple people. Take our blessed Lord, whose uh, you know approach was very very simple. Use his simple stories, pithy sayings, uh, very simple, and uh, the uh, metaphors and the parables in order to communicate uh, important truths. And we are going to come down when you make it very simple, understood by the people. And we become very not only organization, and we also become you know popular in the good sense of the term. It is not for our self glory, but in order to make the kingdom of God relevant and meaningful. So embrace members and staff customers talking positively. Today, if you take technology, my dear friends, always you know positive, negativity interpretation, but in general, there is a positive tone in media products people they try to sell. Ah, for that, we are selling also, as I told you, in good sense of the term, gospel values, social and ethical values. But are we positive in our approach, in our thinking, in our presentation, in our integration? Very often we're negative. And as regards the media, there are only two uh, reactions on our part. One is we are overwhelmed. Oh, wow, very good. Ah, we are just see, enamored by the media. The other one is very intimidated. Because we are not so friendly, we're not so accustomed to uh, social media networks, eh? and we think, oh my God, I cannot. So we are intimidated or overwhelmed. It depends on eh, our interaction or our involvement in the social media. Now, check in on analytics and management tools frequently. Very important. We need to analyze. If you want to do something, there are only four steps. First is awareness is very important about the media. Second one is analysis. We need to analyze the impact of the particular medium or the media or the social networks. Third, reflections, how they, we can make it powerful, how we can integrate it into our ministries. Yes, reflection. And the fourth one only is action. Therefore, awareness, analysis, reflection, and action. If you don't follow these four steps, straight away plunge into action, our you know, end result is very, very dismal very, very you know, discouraged. Therefore, we need to do it very professionally when we are trying to speak our social media or digital media in our uh, Christian ministries. Next, my dear friends, what are the different types of social media? Many of us, we are not aware of it. There are four main categories of social platforms. What are they? First is social networks. People use these networks to connect with one another. Second is media sharing networks. These networks focus is on content. Yes, very important. Media sharing networks, content. 
And the third one is community-based networks. The focus of this type of social network is in-depth discussion, much like a blog forum. Users leave prompts for discussion that is spiral into detailed comment threads. And the fourth one is review board networks. Review board networks. With these networks, the focus is on a review, usually of a product or service. Users can write reviews. My dear friends, what I'm presenting is a Christian approach. That's why the church bell is ringing. See, uh, my dear friends, please remember these four main categories, social networks, media sharing networks, community-based networks, review board networks, very important. Now, what are examples of social media? Now, very quickly run through Facebook, LinkedIn, then Pin, uh, Pin, uh, Pinterest, uh, then we have uh, uh, Reddit, Reddit, subreddits, Twitter, Wikipedia, WhatsApp, uh, and you name it. So we have got each one has got its own you know, benefits, uh, advantages, and disadvantages, uh, limitations, uh, and also what about threats, uh, or we can just uh, say, we can say challenges. So social media is a great tool, but it can also be a detrimental tool. Please, it is like a two-edged sword. We take media like a two-edged sword. We can use it for you know uh, benefits uh, in order to just to say bring in um, the positive results. It can also you know hamper. It can also uh, be used as a stumbling block or divide the community. It depends on the user. It's not on the just to say knife. Take knife, whether it's good or bad, depends on the user. I can take a knife, cut an apple into four pieces, share with uh, those pieces with others, or I can take a knife and kill somebody. So let us not blame the knife. Like uh, so much of, uh, the, similarly, let us not blame the social media. It is uh, our uh, purpose, uh, our intention, uh, our use, how we are using the social media or integrating, I don't like the term use, we are not using, we are integrating media into our ministries. And we should know, and depends on us. If you are not aware of it, definitely the end result will be, as I told you, it will not bring us any reward. So our goal is to show God's love and share the gospel through a social media without causing harm in the process. With what that is our goal in mind, what do we need to be aware of when posting on social media? First of all, these six things. When done well, can help our social media posts to flourish. First, be aware of who your audience. My dear friends, those are in the communications. You will remember, you will agree with me. First of all, credibility. Credibility is the hallmark of a communicator or any organization. Credibility, people should believe in me. People should believe in my organization. That credibility on the part of the communicator, organization, the communicator is the broadest sense, maybe the principal or the director, whoever it is. Next is an audience. Very important. We need to know the audience. The whole presentation depends on the audience. This evening, I'm talking to all the experts, the intelligentsia. Therefore, my presentation is completely different. I'm giving you uh, sort of technical terms uh, and I'm using also some of the uh, terms which only educated people can understand. If I'm giving this uh, talk to ordinary simple people, in the church or in an institution, I have to come down to their level. Or I'm talking to the children. I can't use the bombastic terms. I can't use uh, iPhone terminologies. I have to come down. So I used to always explain this audience very in a simple way. Audience, take this as an acronym. We need to know the audience. A, their age. U, understanding level. D, demographics. I, their interests. E, expectations. N, needs. See, we need to customize a presentation according to the uh, needs of the people. Now, some of you are participating, participating from uh, at different uh, parts of uh, the country or the world. If I use an Indian term, which other, the person may not understand, so I have to customize uh, my term or examples that I give uh, in order to cater to the needs of uh, the target group. And E stands for, we are Christian ministers. Therefore, our approach should be empathetic. Jesus Christ became powerful, you know, he is a powerful communicator because his approach was empathetic, understood the people. Therefore, in order to make our social media or digital media 
uh, ministry is very successful. We need to know the audience and we need to come down to the level of the audience uh, and make our presentations uh, uh, palatable to the audience. And we need to know also the level of the audience and also the language, very important. Next comes evaluate uh, our followers' engagement. Yes, research is a good start to finding out about our audience, what are they are in need of, what they want, and how to present it, and the time factor, and various other factors, and what way it is going to be useful for them. That's why even in, you know, in the classroom, what the teacher teaches in the class, from classroom to the living room, you should be applied. If it is not, if it's not useful for me personal, or what I'm presenting this evening to you, if it is not very helpful, my dear friends, definitely you will just ignore it. Therefore, evaluate the needs of our audience, their expectations. Next is keep trust in the front of your mind. Yes, trust is super important when it comes to our audience and very especially the social uh, networks of the media. People should believe in that organization and whatever they say. Very often people are misguided, but they present in such a way and the people they accept it consciously or subconsciously, whatever that organization or the company sees. Therefore, we should see ensure that uh, we uh, envisage uh, trust uh, in the people and uh, we also you know, make them realize that as an individual, as an organization, they can trust us. One way to lose the trust is to not post or not post quickly enough about important current events. Study, reflect, and what is needed, required, only that particular content uh, we share with our uh, uh, with the audience. Then the fourth one, stay up to date with the important events. My dear friend, this is a great challenge. If you ask me, we fail in this regard. As Christian organizations, yes, we start with a big bang. But we don't stay up to date with the important events. We don't update our knowledge in the first place. Secondly, we also don't update our infrastructure. And we don't update our, just to say, the software. We don't update or give the ongoing training to the people. So we are not professionals. So as a result, what happens, my dear friends, our organization may not match up or compete with the other uh, secular uh, so-called the media, uh, the business centers uh, or media establishments. That does not mean, you know, we are doing compete all the time, but at the same time, on par with, if we are not, uh, you know, making our organizations of the media ministry professional, uh, people they look for it uh, elsewhere. So next is, uh, speed is also key here. Immediately, I used to share this concept, my dear friends, I like some Mark's gospel. In St. Mark's Gospel, not only, not only we got only 16 chapters, uh, but uh, Mark uses the term and immediately, and immediately, and immediately. You just you browse through, you'll come across these two words, and immediately. But we procrastinate, we just to say push aside, whereas the secular media, and, we, and immediately. Only then, you know, we can, early birds uh, catch worms, they say. So if we are not doing it, and immediately we postpone by the time we come together, convene the meeting and share our ideas and you know, resolve and take some decisions and implement it, by the time people have just gone, we miss the bus. Therefore, speed is also a key factor. It is a great challenge for us to compete with or to make our ministry, media ministry, very vibrant and successful. Next is keep your frustration out of it. Yes. When responding to events, comments, or criticisms, my dear friends, sometimes uh, we are uh, desperate, but we need to face the frustration sometimes. What we expected, uh, we may not uh, reap the reward, but we have to move forward. We mustn't be, you know, just to say frustrated. You can love people that feel like you are online enemies through the way you respond. Yes, we can also be know our enemies. Uh, and the good rule, uh, thumb rule is, my dear friends, uh, we are Christian ministers and pray for them before we engage with them. Praying for them remains as of what is most important. Yes, prayer is very important so that the people, they feel that we are a praying community and what the technology we use, they are only means, they are not ending themselves. This is also very important. For the secular organizations, the business of the profit is their end. But for us, no, they are only means of a communication. And our end is spreading the kingdom of God and winning the souls for God. That is our primary goal. 
primary objective. So we need to make God as the center of our media ministry, my dear friends. Next, digital technology is no longer, no longer an alternative social space. I just say skip that because uh, now this is a very important. Together in Christ, responding to social media challenges. Together in Christ, responding to social media challenges. Social media versus digital media. Both are not the same. Some of us, we just are trying to just equate these two terms. They are completely, to some extent, my difference. They are different. There are few factors of commonality we can find. But what exactly is social media or the digital media? Before discussing the differences between digital and social media, we need to understand its exact meaning and digital marketing. Digital marketing online promotes any businesses and its products and services through various potential digital media. For your information, social media is a part of digital media. You know that? Websites, blogs, content marketing, paid advertisements on various search engines, paid digital advertisements on websites, et cetera. They're part of the digital marketing. We can understand that although social media is unavoidable, it is an essential part of these digital media marketing techniques. That's why today the business uh, tactics uh, completely earlier uh, social media, they thought only people are trying to chat rooms and they're extending their ideas. Uh, and uh, sometimes it is only for a particular group uh, or religion, church, organization. But uh, now digital marketing, they knew, they know very well. And they are already infiltrated the social media uh, realm. Uh, and now they are marketing their products, even on social media or through social media. So what does uh, digital media consist of? Digital media includes, as I told you, many other factors, such as websites. Uh, then we've got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, um, search engines, uh, blogs, uh, online articles, uh, digital billboards, uh, and many other factors that can help. It is very difficult and challenging to solve all digital marketing needs uh, because uh, the sky is the limit. Now, coming back to what is social media? Social media is part of digital media, I told you and includes uh, many social platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. As I told you, there are 23 or 24, right? you've got just to say a platform. And people, they have taken uh, interest, maybe Google Place or uh, LinkedIn, Tumblr, or Snapchat, or, uh, chat, et cetera. And many people are using all these social platforms extensively every day to communicate with each other. Since digital marketing already exists, uh, it seems best to move the marketing area to social media platforms. See how that, therefore there is no other option. And we have to be very conscious and careful. We might use the social media platforms in order to just to say promote our religious values or social ethical values. But at the same time, my dear friends, they are also infiltrated and they can also simultaneously uh, you know, come under a different garb, different appearance, and they will sell their own products through social media. So social media companies have a lot of payments that is I skip over, that is not required because time factor. Now coming back to this, is social media important for churches? Now come to the crucial point. Social media allows, my dear friends, there is no question of whether or not. It is how and when, and we need to use the social media. Social media, including church social media, touches all aspects of our lives from work to school to religious institutions, our worship, social networking, evangelization, on-the-spot communication devices, our email. These all work together to enhance communication, foster faith sharing and deepen relationships. Now, practical tips. What are the practical tips? First, treat everything you share on social media like it's public. Yes, very important as I told you, there is no privacy. Once you upload it, it goes to everybody. When people, they share whatever you uploaded on social media and it is becomes public. Please remember this. Whatever we upload, whatever we share on the public domain, it becomes public. People can. Second, it is better that we keep records. All transcripts of online chats, blogs, and videos should be saved when possible. How oh, this even is a presentation is recorded. Yes, keep it. Sometimes uh, we may not know what the person has said or important point we can uh, uh, you know, call out from the presentation and use it for uh, our own benefit. Uh, 
or sometimes may not agree. Therefore, keep records of your uh, you know, media or social network uh, or ministries uh, or the products or the activities. Third, use the private groups uh, where needed. Adults who minister to youth and who want to connect via social networking website can set up a private group account for the youth and their families. Therefore, this is a very specific target group. And we think what they required and also we get their feedback, what they're expecting from the church, churches and ministers so that we design the program in order to cater to the needs of the youth because their ethos is completely different. Their expectations are different. Therefore, we need to come down to their level and we benefit. Next is uh, be mindful of our audience. I already explained this to you. Fifth one is sometimes face-to-face -face conversations are, are more appropriate. All said and done, my dear friends, different types of communications. The best communication is interpersonal communication, face-to-face -face communication. Ultimately, all the social media networks uh, should uh, lead us to have this face-to-face -face, uh, conversation and a face-to-face meeting with the people that there comes a Christian approach and a Christian sharing. Next is set healthy boundaries. In the world of social media boundaries and safety practices must, must mirror the physical world. That is, be smart about what you see. In communication, what you say is very important, but how you say is more important than what you say. I repeat, in communication, what you say is important, but how you see is more important than what you see. In communication, we communicate not to impress people, but we express our ideas, our values. That is very important. The purpose of social media is to communicate with and inform the people. Eighth one is get permission. Sometimes we cannot just say, make sure we have permission when posting some request, either from the person or sometimes he's our products. We have to get permission, otherwise uh, we have to face uh, legal problems. Next comes respect copyrights. Here again, this is also an extension of what I said earlier. Speaking of permission, verify the material isn't uh, copyrighted. Otherwise, uh, they will sue you in the court or they de demand uh, you know, compensation. Therefore, we need to make sure that uh, whatever we upload it, uh, it is, uh, you know, we get the permission and doesn't have the copyrighted uh, you know, just to say, uh, think about this, uh, their uh, rights. Then 10th one is post content that is relevant. This is a very important. You probably already refrain from posting offensive content, but also make sure your posts are relevant and meaningful to everyone visiting the site. Yes, everyone should feel he or she can take something out of our uh, presentation or our media content, yes. For instance, referring to an inside joke may affect a particular group. Therefore, you should be very cautious. You mustn't hurt anybody. My dear friends, especially these communications, we should be extra cautious and extra careful. Today, people, they are you know, waiting like wolves. If we be by mistake, we may not have you know, that intention when we produce that product or upload the product, but people can reread our minds and reinterpret it and we are in trouble. Therefore, please make sure that a post content that is relevant for the people doesn't happen. Then monitor social media accounts regularly. Yes, monitoring is very, very important. Assign church staff or volunteers to monitor posts and delete any inappropriate content, giving more than one person access to the account. Very important. Then learn how to change security settings. And as I told you, there is no security. People can just say, I cover uh, just to say um, our websites or our media products. So you should be cautious and careful. They always say it is better to be safe than sorry. Coming back, my dear friends, this is a few 10 uh, suggestions I'm going to give you. Consider media ministry, social media and digital media ministry, not only an opportunity but it is an obligation. It is not only an opportunity for us, today it is an obligation. And we have learned during the past two years, COVID time. It is an obligation for us, and we made extensive use of the social and digital media. Therefore, let us not only consider it as an opportunity, 
by them as an obligation. Second, establish a media resource center. My dear friend, this is a very important suggestion is that however small our organization is, doesn't matter, we need to establish media resources center. And let us collect on the key, all that, so that we can use it for different target groups, such as children and youth, maybe women and lay people, yes, professionals. So media resource center is a must today for our Christian organizations and Christian you know, establishments. Third, form a small media ministry team in our churches and organizations. Small media ministry, today, young people, they are techie savvy. They know, so they are working in multinational companies. Now, we, I'm in Whitefield, uh, Reverend uh, Shampi Thomas also will agree with me that we are in the IT field area. All these uh, youngsters, uh, they know. So let us form a small team. Spare time, they can come and uh, share their expertise uh, and we can all, they can help us uh, in the production of uh, some of the Christian uh, you know, videos uh, or some uh, programs. Uh, obviously, very important. Third is uh, uh, form a small media ministry. Fourth is set up a basic infrastructure. Very important. Basic infrastructure. We may not have high-end uh, you know, gadgets, but at least the basic infrastructure to do our simple and ordinary social ministry, uh, media ministry, we need to have the infrastructure. We are investing money on buildings, uh, money, money on something else. But why can't we just say my difference? The fifth one is earmark funds or find sponsors for the media ministry. And the sixth one is uh, coordinate with other similar organizations to cut down the cost. This is very, very important. When we coordinate with the, similar, the organizations uh, that have similar uh, you know, orientation, or a purpose or objective, it cut down the cost considerably. We can also make use of our, just to say, what we call the uh, media products. We can share. The seventh one is give proper publicity for the programs or activities or services. Very important. See, in any business, planning, production, and marketing. Marketing is, yes, we need to market our products. How will the people come to know? Therefore, we need to give publicity for our media ministry so that people know that this particular organization is producing media products as produced media products. Eighth one, ensure continuity for the ministry, media ministry. Very important. We start and establish and we form the group and we move out. The next pastor, next head of that organization may not have an idea about the importance of the media ministry. As a result, what happens? It just to say it comes to standstill. I used to jokingly say, you know, what is uh, the successor's achievement? A successor achievement is to undo what his predecessor has done, is his or her achievement. To undo what the predecessor has done, we take the credit, say that's what he did. Sorry to tell you, media ministry will never go that way at all, my dear friends. There ought to be continuity, it has to grow. If otherwise, definitely the efforts that we put in, the money that we invested, the energy that we also dissipated or you know, was given, everything will go a waste. Therefore, we should think of the continuity of the media ministry and organizations, institutions. Ninth one is make it more professional. Yes, to stand out in the crowd, be unique. We can't just say, we have to be really professional. There are people here, professionals are available. So let us make use of their expertise and let us make our media ministry very professional so that people, children, youth who are you know, media oriented, they will definitely benefit a lot through our media ministry. The 10th point, update the infrastructure and give professional training to the team. Yes, my dear friends, we purchased, but we cannot. We have to constantly keep our eyes and ears open, and we need to build or improve, update the infrastructure, and that would give a professional touch. And also, let us give training to the people, ongoing training for the people. Therefore, and the small team, as I told you, the media ministry, and definitely do it. So, my dear friends, I just presented very quickly, and I can share this PPT with all of you. And I've got five more minutes. This house is open now to clarify, or you want to add any other points that you think I left out, please feel comfortable. This is only a sharing, fraternal sharing with each one of you, my dear friends. 
So if you want to ask some questions, uh, you're free. Uh, Reverend Vinod, uh, you on the screen? So anybody would like to clarify or any uh, question? If you have any questions or any clarifications, you can raise it so that uh, Monsignor will be able to uh, clarify our doubts, clear our doubts. I think the presentation is uh, immensely uh, detailed. So uh, people, I don't think people have any, any question, but maybe uh, certain areas, uh, certain clarification where we can do more uh, in the ministry, in the media ministry for the benefit of the church, particularly for the common people. And uh, it is very it much, much striking that uh, uh, Father was saying that we need to come down to the level of the people and the audience is very, very important. Uh, when I teach, I, I always tell my students that uh, don't go to an urban congregation and preach for uh, 40 minutes. Uh, you will know no audience at all in the church. But when you go to a, a rural area, you need to uh, preach for more than an hour so that you will have a good audience. So it is uh, it depends uh, uh, heavily on the audience. And uh, thank you, Monsignor, for uh, that uh, detailed uh, way of presentation. And uh, uh, definitely, it is immensely rich in contents uh, to understand. And I would say that uh, the Monsignor was uh, uh, making a mark, Mars gospel immediately. And I always, uh, uh, you know, stress that word immediately for Mark is a very busy man and he wants to get everything immediately. Uh, and uh, that's the way. And uh, uh, Monsignor also was uh, uh, kind of a Mark, uh, you know, going very fast, <laughs> you know, giving us so many things uh, for our understanding. And thank you so much. Uh, still, the floor is open for uh, any, any questions or clarifications. I think, uh, I, think I'll, I will uh, request mm -hmm. Milnum. Yes. Yeah, Milnum. Yes, Milnum. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much, Father, for, I mean, the very beautiful presentations. And yeah, indeed, the session and the content was really uh, enriching us. And I'm so thankful for that. And when you say about uh, social media ministry, so are you focusing more on whatever is being uh, done in the church also to be uh, make available to people who are not able to attend? through online or I mean, I mean uploading the sessions in uh, YouTube so that they can watch later? Or uh, do you suggest any other form of ministry? Can you please uh, elaborate more on that? Thank you. As I mentioned, uh, Menron, as I said, all said and done, the face-to-face, -face, uh, the physical presence of the people in our church uh, in activities uh, should be really promoted. They're very important point. Point number two is, you said about our media ministry, is it for the people who are, don't have the opportunity to be present? Is it for them or for who else can benefit out of it? But both, see, for example, let us say I presented this. You understood and you are there, whether physical or online. Now you want to go back. You want to retrieve what I was said. So where to? So if you upload it on your you know, church's website, they can always go back and they can always uh, reflect on whatever you said. And uh, more so, when the people that don't, especially during COVID time, they didn't have the opportunity to come to the church. So the only way that we could uh, keep in touch with them was, only way they could participate in our worship services through online. So there it became inevitable for us, condition. So uh, it is also either way, but it is very important uh, we need to we mustn't, you know, just to say, uh, make it a kind of uh, without which we cannot survive. No, that is not uh, the our idea or contact uh, our intention. But we need to make uh, media ministry relevant for the people as and when it is required and if it is useful for them. Yes. 
Yeah, thank you so much for that. If uh, any any other clarifications or questions, you're welcome. I think well, uh, uh, there seems uh, you know question from our uh, participants, and uh, I hand over to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I will make this available for you, so I will send it to uh, to Minlun, and he will share this. We can also use it for your uh, groups and the uh, presentation will be useful. Yeah, thank you. And uh, formal. A word of thanks will be delivered by our director, Father, I mean, Reverend Dr. Sam P. Thomas. Before that, I would like to make one announcement to, the, to all the participants. Next week, uh, we will off the uh, lecture. I mean, uh, since that is the patient week. And the following week, we will have uh, the last session for this series of lecture, Pandemic COVID-19. Worship and Liturgy by Reverend Sudhaka Joshua, the former Deputy Director of ECC. May I now invite our Director, Reverend Dr. Sarki Thomas, to propose word of thanks. I am very happy to propose this uh, word of thanks to Reverend Vinod Allen, the faculty member of Karnataka, the Kerala United Theological Seminary, as he had mentioned that he had to get back from the hospital to moderate this session. We wish and pray that your grandchild uh, will be better and will be healed of whatever uh, difficulties the child has. Um, thank you for accepting this invitation and also for not excusing uh, from this responsibility uh, for chairing this session and for giving this wonderful leadership. So on behalf of all of us and ECC, I take this opportunity to thank, uh, express our gratitude to Ravrat Vinod Allen. Father Jayanathan is uh, my dear neighbor um, in three places. When he was the director of Archbishop Diocesan Communication Center, I was his neighbor at United Theological College, Bangalore. When he was in St. Germain's church, I was looking after a nearby Marthuma Parish near MG Road. And now again, we are neighbors. We are neighbors and as he had rightly said, we have to love our neighbor. Anyway, we have to love uh, each other because it is three times that we had been uh, put as neighbors. And uh, it so happens that we belong to the same academic background of communication. So as a neighbor, as a parish priest friend, as a monsignor of the Catholic diocese and arch, uh, archdiocese of Bangalore, he had been giving wonderful, dynamic, energetic leadership, not only to the church, but also to the ecumenical field, to the human rights forum, to the communication activities, and above all the media ministry. And this evening, he had enlightened us from theory, from practice, and also especially from a ministry perspective. So Father Jayanathan, we are happy that you are Monsignor and at the same time, you are a media minister and you have given us a lecture which was beyond any uh, need for clarification. So on behalf of all of us, I take this opportunity to express our heartfelt gratitude to Monsignor Father S. Jayanathan. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Reverend Shampi Thomas, and also Reverend Vinod, and all of you. Thank you for your patient listening. Let us pray for each other. Thank you very much. Thank you, and I thank all the other participants um, uh, who have graced this occasion. Thank you for your participation. And since we will not be meeting uh, next week for the because of the Passion Week, uh, may we all have uh, a final week of Lent uh, when we reflect on the Passion of Christ and also the joy of resurrection. Thank you. 
Thank you so much.